Roman, there are certain truck technologies that we really love, and then there are some technologies that we hate. Yeah, there's been just a plethora of new innovation in the truck world. And in this video, we're going to give you the, well, more than top five and more than, probably more than top ten <laughs> new truck tech that we love. In other words, bring it on or that we hate, get rid of it. So in a TFL manner, let's start with the stuff we love first before we get to the stuff we hate. Yeah, how about top five best? Uh, with a bonus. Yep. And the top five worst. All right. All right. Let's start with the best. So um, this is a double one, Andre. Uh, so it's onboard scales uh, and uh, onboard power. Yeah. So Ford has really kind of spearheaded this technology in their F-150 and now also their Super Duty trucks that are coming online. Um, and it's a really great way for the truck itself to tell you, I'm talking about onboard scales, how much weight you're carrying. This is amazing. Yeah, it's cool. It basically gives you a display. The only thing I don't like about it, it doesn't give you an exact number. It just gives you kind of a, are you, yeah, a, a range, little, right? A range. Are you in the right range? Yeah. But basically, when you load your truck up, uh, you can go to the screen, and it'll show you how close you are to you know your full payload. Yeah, which is great, no matter if you're towing or hauling something in the bed. But then they did something else with the F-150 hybrid and its onboard power, up to 7.2 kilowatts of it. Yeah, and in the uh, Lightning, they also gave you a little bit more because they also put in outlets in the frunk. So now you can go to a work site and you can basically use your truck as a generator uh, to power your tools or to power your, I don't know if you're using it, for instance, to charge up a bicycle or even, we tried this, uh, to charge up a dead electric car that you're towing. <laughs> Yeah, we've tried everything. Yeah. You know, we tried powering campsites, campers. This is a really useful feature, and I think more truck makers need to adopt it. I agree, and I think it's coming. Yeah. All right, number four on our list, and we're counting down to number one, of course. Our, uh, of course, there's been a tailgate war, uh, and there's been a bed war. So in terms of tailgates, you know, they've rethought the tailgate. Once upon a time, it was just a little you know, piece of metal that flopped down. Uh, and over the last 10 years, it's gotten much more sophisticated yeah, for example, General Motors had a multi-pro tailgate. Well, that's their marketing name. But it's basically a tailgate that folds into a step. Uh, you could use it as a workbench. Uh, it's, and it's really speakers, useful. They have speakers in it? Yes, speakers, lights. Ford put uh, a ladder into their tailgate. Well, um, yeah, it's maybe not the best solution, <laughs> but okay. Uh, they've also electrified them now. Yes. So that they both open and close electrically yeah. or that they lock. Uh, they put lights in them. Uh, manufacturers have put all kinds of different uh, like measuring tools in them. There's even a bottle opener that you can have in your tailgate so that when you're done <laughs> working, working, you can go and open up your favorite beverage using the tailgate. <laughs> and also barn doors with RAM, right? Yeah. And barn door, you know, it sounds, you know, kind of funky, but it actually gives you more access to the bed, right? You open it in the traditional barn door style, and you could reach in and get stuff out. And of course, we're talking about not just the tailgates, but the bed itself. And we've changed the materials. Once upon a time, a bed was just, you know, steel, right? Now Ford is, of course, building it out of aluminum. Uh, Chevy has their composite. Uh, I think uh, Honda does that same thing with the Ridgeline. Also Toyota, right? So yeah. th that they're now carbon fiber, plastic mixes, right. uh, which, you know, don't rust, uh, don't need uh, to have bed spray put on them. Just a lot of interesting use of materials that make the uh, bed much more uh, functional and much lighter. Yeah, because weight matters, like we talked about, right? Uh, and also, there's one caveat, some of those composite plastic beds can be slippery. So you need to watch out for that. Yeah, I, I bounced a... a a cinder, <laughs> cinder block into one and almost bounced it through the rear window of the truck. <laughs> yeah. So, so they are bouncy too. Uh, and we, we could, of course, talk about like, you know, dropping the uh, toolbox into the aluminum bed. But uh, okay. we've done enough of that. All right. <laughs> Number three. Um, this is also something that's changing uh, the way that trucks are now used off-road. And that is active shocks and, of course, off-road packages. So we just recently did a Raptor R brand new truck, I gauntlet, And of course, active shocks work off-road, but they also work with towing. So it's quite amazing. Um, in that Raptor, when you put it in tow haul mode, it stiffens up the shocks and it provides a better, more comfortable towing experience. And they work across a wide range of terrain. Yeah, um, and they're good for things like when you jump the truck, right? The, it stiffens up. It stiffens up so that you don't slam it into the bump stops. Uh, and um, the other 
thing that's happened is there's been an explosion of off-road packages, right? Once upon a time, if you were a Ford guy or gal, you had a FX4 package or you had a Raptor. That was it. Now, of course, there's all these packages. And it's not just Ford. It's everybody, yeah. including the Japanese. They're just creating all sorts of different off-road packages, everything from light to, you know, Baja Racer. Yeah, and it's also important to note, um, as prices creep up, right, that some of these off-road packages are affordable. For example, you know, Toyota is offering kind of their trail packages uh, at a more affordable affordable price point. GM has, for example, Chevy has the Trail Boss. Uh, and then, of course, Ford has the Rattler, you know, the F-150 Rattler. So, so and the Tremor, Tremor, yeah. Tremor packages. Yeah. And, of course, Ram, the Rebel, right? Yeah. So, so they're also getting more accessible. Yeah, and uh, let's face it, you could always add these things onto a truck, but it's always better and cheaper if you buy it from the factory because not only is it warrantied, uh, but it's actually designed to work with the components of the truck versus you know you going down to your local shop and hoping that the uh, lift kit and the shocks you put on it won't fall off at the first <laughs> serious off-road right. opportunity. Right. All right, uh, number two, and this has also been something that's been great, just a, pull, uh, just a huge amount of different camera tech. So everything from... Um, you know, cameras that show 360-degree views of the vehicle to hitch cameras to underbody cameras like in the Hummer EV uh, to trailer cameras to in-trailer cameras. I mean, it's just incredible the amount of cameras now. Yeah, and um, it's all to help you see around the truck, right? And I think in the last couple of years specifically, like you said, trailer cams and also uh, trailer tire pressure monitoring systems, right? But you're, you're jumping again on I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, but, We're talking but, about cameras. I know. Don't, okay. don't jump ahead. Okay. So, you know, you know, backing up a trailer by yourself. Yes. And you have no idea what's behind it. Yes. You know, cameras will help you there. Yes. And you can, you know, even like watch your favorite horse inside the trailer now. Yeah. Hi, horse. <laughs> so you know that the horse is happy. Yeah. All right. Number one, Andre. And this has, I think, been the most important uh, new truck tech that has come along in the last 10 years. And that is, of course... Uh, tow ratings have just exploded. I mean, you know, once upon a time, towing 15,000 pounds uh, with a heavy-duty truck seemed like a lot. Today, that'd be a joke. Yeah, and I recently did another test, which surprised the heck out of me. Uh, we have the Ford Ranger, mm -hmm. um, and we tow. I towed because Brendan's Suburban, his classic Suburban, broke down, and I brought it back. We towed it uh, with the Ranger, so towing capacities have increased. And it was actually felt like a comfortable experience when we're pushing the Ranger to the maximum. Yeah, I think the best way to define that would be like mid-sized trucks tow what full-size trucks tow 10 years ago, and full-size trucks tow what heavy-duty trucks tow 10 years ago, and heavy-duty trucks tow what semis tow. I mean, we're looking at 30,000 pounds or more. Oh, up to 40,000 pounds. pounds. Yeah, That's in some heavy-duty trucks. Yeah. yeah. So, and those are usable numbers that you can use every day, as long as you look at your ratings. All right, now now for your bonus, which is the oh. uh, uh, trailer TPMS, which is pretty cool. Sorry, I jumped the gun there. And, of course, uh, sway control, which has been around a while, but it's still good, right? Uh, now most trucks have sway control, so uh, it'll keep your trailer from flipping the truck. <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, have you seen the, one of those guys or gals who took their boat out for the first time this season and they're on the side of the highway with the flat tire yes. on their trailer. Yes. Uh, well, you could avoid that with the trailer tire pressure monitors and also sway control. Yeah, so the pressure monitors now actually read in the truck. So when we bought our Hummer EV, we got four spare TPMS monitors. I'm like, what's this for? And I'm like, oh, it's for the trailer. Right. I, you still have to install it. <laughs> well, yeah, and configure it. But, configure. but still, once you get it going, you will know exactly what your tires are doing. All right, well, that was the uh, gold stars. And now let's talk about the stuff that uh, we'd love to get rid of, the stuff that maybe the manufacturer took just a little bit too far or trends that we can't stand that, that make, you know, trucking worse. So at number five, um, and this, this is a little bit uh, macho-y, but, you know, Truck manufacturers have installed these little tiny knobs that now allow you to back up a trailer without actually using the steering wheel. In other yes. words, uh, trailer backup assist. Do you want to talk about that, Andre? Well, so Ford had it, and then, of course, even Land Rover, you know, for their SUVs, they installed it. Um, and then Ram has it, and now, now Toyota Tundra has it. Uh, and in my experience, we've tested, remember, the TRX with that system? And it works okay. Yeah, so the idea is instead of being counterintuitive where you turn into the way the trailer is 
turning right. So in, if you want to go right, you turn left, left, you turn right. These little knobs, you turn right. If you want the trailer to go right, you turn left. If you want the trailer to go left. Or, and then they proceeded, you know, they got more advanced. So then they s- steer for you, right? Mm-hmm. But I, well, I mean, I've been used backing up trailers for a few years, but I can always do it faster and probably more precise than these systems. So the system is just getting in the way of what I'm doing. Yeah, it seems like a little bit of it's marketing. And I I suppose if you're not used to backing up trailers, this may give you a level of confidence that you normally wouldn't have. But you're right. It it seems like... uh it seems like it's just one thing that uh, makes but it, it, it harder and not easier. And you know, sometimes new technology, like it doesn't work 100% of the time. So that 1% of the time it doesn't work, you lose all your confidence, right? Mm-hmm. So that's not great. All right, number four, um, and this is something that, that is, keeps getting um, <laughs> worse and worse, and that is tall, uh, tall trucks, tall hoods, uh, tall beds, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, tall trucks are cool. And people lift trucks, but at some point, if you're trying to use a truck as a truck, if you can't even reach the inside of the bed because the truck is so tall, it makes it pretty hard to use as a work truck and even as a like a you know a play truck. Yeah, and if you can't reach inside the hood to check something or fix something, that's or, also a problem. Or if you're off roading and you can't see over the hood, all you see is just you know a giant <laughs> hood. <laughs> hood because it's so tall. And yes. part of that reason is because of cooling, right? Yeah, so I was talking to an engineer, spe- spe- uh, specifically from Ram, and they were saying how important the radiators are, right? The re- especially for heavy-duty trucks, you want as much cooling as possible to tow the maximum amounts of weights as possible. Uh, and that creates a big grill, and that creates a big hood. So it's kind of always a fight versus tall hood versus cooling. Yeah, GM's kind of design language of a fist into the wind is, you know, cool, but uh, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a guy who has to drive a truck on an everyday basis and has to park it in tight parking spaces, it makes parking hard. And that's why the cameras. Yes. All right, number three, I think there's, I don't know of anybody who actually likes this. I'm sure there must be somebody, <laughs> but cylinder deactivation, right? Yes. So GM is big on this, right? Yes. Uh, Ram has been doing it, some other companies. Uh, basically, it's a way to save a little bit of fuel. Um, as the truck is moving, uh, if it's not towing and you're not accelerating, it will shut down certain cylinders in your engine and try to save fuel. But it got a bad rap a few years back, you know, older technologies that, you know, they were, you know, the engines were not as durable because of this system. And and it's, and the engine sounds different. Yeah, it's also complexity, right? Yeah. It makes the truck much more complex and people who have... Uh, bought these systems find that down the road uh, they're more expensive to repair and they're more likely to break Uh, and so people just would rather not have um, the truck's ability to shut down cylinders because they want to get the power all the time anyway um, if you disagree with me let me know because i have not heard anybody who likes cylinder deactivation all right number two andre and this has to do with basically trucks are becoming much more luxurious right Mm -hmm. Uh, but that has a direct impact on their payload yeah, so we see half-ton trucks like a Chevy 1500 or Ford F-150 with payloads between like 1,500 pounds and 1,600 pounds. And these are 4x4 four four trucks. Sometimes they're lower. Uh, we've seen payloads around 1,200 or 1,100 pounds. Well, dude, that's like five of us. If five guys get in the truck, you're basically maxing out its payload. Yeah, yeah, and you'll see that in mid-sized trucks spe- specifically where you could run out of payload if you put four of your friends on a big dog into it. Yeah, so that's not good. And that's be- because – go ahead. Well, it's because you're adding all the technology uh, like panoramic moon sunroofs, I don't know, uh, leather massaging seats. Active shocks, cameras, uh, tailgates. Everything we love, you mean? (laughs) (laughs) All that stuff has weight, which (laughs) subtracts payload. All right, and number one uh, is um, electrification, actually, Andre. This is not electrification in terms of, like, driving the truck around. This is specifically to do with, like, electric trucks and towing because I think that the manufacturers kind of rushed. There was this this gold rush after Rivian came out with their first pickup truck to to make trucks electric, and yet... um, Sort of like motorcycles, uh, electric trucks don't tow very well. Uh, of course, motorcycles don't tow, but kind of like motorcycles don't need to be electric because they don't use a lot of gas. But it doesn't improve the it thing, doesn't, right? It doesn't improve it, and it makes it worse. So if you want to tow with an electric truck, you're going to have maybe 100 miles of range. And then to make matters worse, uh, our infrastructure is not set up for towing. So you know you got to stop every 100 miles, and you got to tow um, 
and run the battery down to empty, then you got to charge a long time. And then when you pull up the charger, you either have to unhitch or, you know, take up everybody else's uh, electric spaces. spaces. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's just not ready for prime time. Uh, and the obvious solution is a range extender, which no one has yet, uh, for some mysterious reason, officially uh, built. Yeah, and even, you know, Ford has a hybrid right now, mm -hmm. and Toyota does too, but those don't add a lot of efficiency either. Right, so so it's it's it seems like I mean there are some good parts about electrification, especially like F one hundred and fifty onboard power, right? But it's not super super great. No, it's a it's a problem, uh, and the other problem is of course aerodynamics, right? Trucks are not the most aerodynamic thing. So, you know, electric cars, it's like real estate. You know, it's location, location, location. With electric vehicles, it's range, 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 and trucks are just not aerodynamically built to be good uh, electric vehicles. Uh, they also have off-road tires for the most part, which is also bad for range. And so you end up with a vehicle that needs a very big battery uh, and that if you take it on highway speeds, creates a giant hole in the wind, which leads to low range. Yeah, not good. Not good. And then the bonus, Andre, and this is, I think, one that we can all agree with, and it's a two-part bonus. One, the ability to get new trucks, but more importantly, the ability uh, to pay for new trucks. <laughs> They've gotten so expensive. Yeah, and hopefully the stuff we loved, we discussed earlier in the show, um, yes, some of it adds cost, right? But also some of it stuff is like affordable off-road packages are still there. But right now, all trucks are expensive, and I ordered my Chevy Colorado, what, four and a half months ago, and I still don't have it. That's so. very specific to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I've heard from other people that also are waiting for their trucks for months, if not years. Yeah, because once upon a time, like the truck was popular because it did a lot of things and it did it at a lot less money than like an equivalent car would. And now uh, somehow trucks have not just surpassed cars, but they've gone through the roof in terms of pricing. It's not uncommon to see trucks approaching $100,000 or more, which is, you know, pretty staggering um, for something that's supposed to be, you know, the biggest tool in your toolbox. But it is the biggest tool because it, it will have take to be the most expensive tool. But it will take your family to the five-star restaurant and it will tow 30,000 pounds. So, I mean, there, there's some trade-offs here that they're becoming more luxurious and also more capable. Yeah, but the American truck has always, I think, been more about uh, capability and um, you know, kind of, kind of simplicity, being the, simplicity, and yeah. being kind of the every person vehicle, right? That you don't care about it. You throw stuff in the back. You 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 leave it parked outside. And when you start approaching these hundred thousand dollar figures, all that goes out the window, right? Are, are you gonna th are you gonna throw like a shovel in the back of your platinum F three fifty? Well, if it's bedlined, uh, I might throw a shovel in there. <laughs> and if your dog has had a manicure, <laughs> you might throw him back there as long as those, those dog nails aren't too long. Well, there you have it, guys. Let us know what you think uh, is the best and worst uh, new truck tech. And uh, always go to uh, altfl.com uh, where we post all of our different channels so you can stay up on what's happening not only in the truck world but in the car world as well. Thanks, Scott. See you guys next time. Ciao.